Welcome to another Hornbill TV special explainer, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Alan Lee. Perhaps for the first time in the history of India and Canada, two traditional allies bound by common democratic objectives over the years, there is a Cold War. The two countries are facing their biggest challenge, the biggest challenge to their relations following the killing of a Khalistani leader in Canada earlier. So what's going on? What is the cause? The Canadian government has alleged possible involvement of the Indian government in the killing of a Canadian citizen, 45-year-old uh, Hardeep Singh Nija, a Khalistani activist who was wanted in India on terror-related charges. On June 18, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police reported a shooting at Guru Nanak Sikh Gurudwara in Canada's Shuri in uh, British Columbia. The victim was identified as 45-year-old Hardeep Singh Nijar, a Khalistani activist who was sought by the Indian government. Uh, Nijar was found reportedly with multiple gunshot wounds. He was declared dead at the scene of the shooting. Authorities say that the incident happened on a Sunday at approximately about 8.27 p.m. local time. Uh, Nija, who was recently included in a list of 40 designated terrorists released by the Indian government earlier, was found dead with bullet wounds inside a car in the temple's parking lot. Homicide investigators leading the investigation said two suspects wearing face coverings fled the scene on foot investigators later added a third suspect to the list ladies and gentlemen in july according to media reports canadian authorities reportedly established the believed escape route of the suspect they believed to have found the suspects took after committing the crime they also identified the silver 2008 toyota camry as the suspected getaway vehicle Media reports say there were suspicions of foreign interference in the killing. However, no arrests have been made so far in this case. Several months after Khalistani Tiger Force Chief Nijar was shot dead in Canada, the Prime Minister of Canada on Monday accused the Indian government of being responsible for the fatal shooting. Nijar was gunned down outside a Gurudwara in a parking lot in Canada, Surrey, British Columbia on June 18. Hailing from Bharsingpur village in Punjab's Jalandhar, Nijar was based in Surrey and had been declared an absconder by the National Investigation Agency of India. According to Canada's CBC News, the Prime Minister said his country's national security establishments believe that agents of the Indian government killed the Canadian citizen. Nija was also serving as the president of Suri's Guru Nanak Sikh Gurudwara. The Prime Minister also said Canadian security agencies have been actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of Nija. The Canadian Prime Minister said that the involvement of a foreign hand or government in the killing of a Canadian citizen in Canada was unacceptable. He said any involvement of a foreign government in the killing of a Canadian citizen on Canadian soil is unacceptable violation of the country's sovereignty. In this regard, Canada has expelled an Indian diplomat. Ladies and gentlemen, Canadian Foreign Minister Milani Jolly said on Monday that an Indian diplomat in the country had been expelled. The expulsion came after Prime Minister Justin Trudeau alleged an Indian hand in the killing of the wanted Khalistani leader. There are no details about the Indian diplomat at this time. His name or the place from where he was expelled by the government. Uh, nonetheless, if there should be any updates, we will certainly bring them to you. So in response to the expulsion of the Indian diplomat earlier, the Indian government has also expelled a Canadian diplomat. On Tuesday, uh, India expelled a senior Canadian official to India. Canadian High Commissioner to India Cameron Mackey was summoned today to the South Block, the headquarters of the Ministry of 
uh, external affairs a statement that was issued by the ministry of external affairs said today that the high commissioner of canada to india was informed about the decision of the government of india to expel a senior canadian official based in india the diplomat in concern has been asked to leave india within the next few days that was what we received here earlier the Khalistani movement continues to be one of the principal sore political and administrative spots of India, ladies and gentlemen. The Khalistan movement is a separatist movement seeking to create a separate homeland for Sikhs by establishing an ethno-religious sovereign state called Khalistan, ladies and gentlemen. While there was a lull in the activism of the Khalistani workers during the 90s and early 2000s, the movement has now returned to the Indian new space. This return is attributed to increasing activism by pro Khalistan programs in Western communities, notably Canada, which is home to a considerable population of Indian origin citizens, with most of them being attributed as people of Punjabi descent. Uh, for all of you history buffs, the demand for a separate Sikh state began during the decline of the British Empire government in the subcontinent in India. Media records say that the first explicit call for a Khalistan state was made in a pamphlet titled Khalistan in 1940. The build-up of the movement would reach its crescendo in 1984 when the then Prime Minister of India, Indira Gandhi, ordered the Indian Army to storm the Golden Temple in Amritsar to flush out militants in the temple. Operation Blue Star. I think you might have heard about the Operation Blue Star. Operation Blue Star was an Indian military operation ordered by Prime Minister Indira Gandhi then. The operation was conducted between June 1 and the 8th, 1984, to remove militant religious leader Jarnil Singh Bhindran Wale and his armed followers from the Golden Temple. The temple is the most sacred site for Sikhs. Casualties and death toll from the operation continues to very few of them actually agreeing on the actual total here. Casualty figures from the army put it to about 83 persons dead and about 249 people injured. Former Prime Minister of India Rajiv Gandhi later reportedly admitted that actually more than 700 Indian soldiers died in the operation. According to official estimates from the Indian government, the casualties were a combined total of 493 militant and civilian casualties. Again, uh, independent estimates say more than 5,000 civilians and only 200 militants. So we really don't know whether these figures are correct because to this day, we don't know what happened there when the operation took place and who were in charge of the casualties that the count would be so different from each other. What we know is that Operation Blue Star would change the course of history for India's internal administration and shape its political narrative. Operation Blue Star was originally intended to end the insurgency in Punjab, ladies and gentlemen. Observers say that it actually had the opposite effect. Attacks actually increased as there was more violence in Punjab after Operation Blue Star than before it. Media estimates about civilians, police and militants killed increased from 27 in 1981, 22 in 1982 and about 99 in 1983. Then it increased to more than 1000 per year from 1987 to 1992 and that is right after the operation. On October 31, uh, 1984, the then Prime Minister of India, Indira Gandhi, was assassinated in New Delhi by her two personal security guards, both six, in retaliation to the operation. That was one of the effects too. Further, the operation is widely attributed as one of the main reasons for the 1984 anti-Sikh riots in the country where more than 3,000 Sikhs were killed, most of them in Delhi and North India. 
Thank you for watching this Hornbill TV Explainer. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be bringing you more explanatory stories and updates in this regard and many other news events that might come up later on. We will be sure to bring them to you. I'm Al Muli. See you next time.